What's good, you two? This hood is really light. Giddy up! Guys, welcome back to Lawson's Car Reviews. My name's Tristan, and today I am going over my five hates about the 2023 Dodge Durango RT all-wheel drive version. Not RT, I'm sorry, GT. Um, but let's go ahead and just go through them real quick. I got this car as a rental while my Acura was in the shop, so I've had it about a month already. Actually, I think it's about five weeks. And sometimes it takes a while to figure out what you actually dislike about a vehicle versus what you like about it. So I'm gonna go over some of the basic dislikes. Overall, it's actually been a really good vehicle. Uh, I do not like it over my Acura, but I definitely would pick it over many of the other ones that I got to drive when I was looking for a three row SUV. Um, so I like it more than the Traverse. Uh, I like it more than the GMC Acadia. Uh, I like it more than the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander, which really doesn't even have a legit third row. It kind of has like a tiny, tiny third row. But let's go over some of the dislikes of this. Okay, so one of my first dislikes is the visor. When you open it up and you pop this open, there is no light in the visor whatsoever. It does have that light up here, but most cars nowadays will also have an additional visor light. And if you have like narcissistic children or a wife who likes to look in the mirror all the time, it's gonna be a big deal not having a visor light right there. So that is my first knock. The second one, you're gonna think is a little bit weird, but the other knock is whenever you are fumbling to put to grab things from this middle compartment. Many times when I'm on the highway and the car's in gear and I put my hand down, you hit the hazard light and then all of a sudden you think that you're signaling to go somewhere when really you actually accidentally hit the hazard light. So I don't think that this is a very good spot to actually have it. They could put the hazards anywhere else i mean you could put another button next to the engine button or anywhere but they put it right here and i was find myself constantly knocking it not only i but my wife also said the same thing that she knocks that hazard light non-stop which is very annoying okay another issue which is quite a big issue in this car is the brake feel so the brakes on the Acura are absolutely fantastic. It brakes so sharp, it brakes so perfect. On this car, the pedal travels really far and you can totally feel the added weight of the vehicle and it takes much longer and a much harder press to stop the car and it is not confidence inspiring. So let me know if you own one of these and you found the same thing, if you compare it to driving something else. Maybe you get used to it, but in the month that I had it, I really found that to be annoying and it feels kind of dangerous and like I said it doesn't really inspire confidence when you're driving in stop start traffic and you feel like the brake pedal is not doing a good job of getting you to stop. Okay today I moved things, I moved the TV stand from work and one issue that I found is when you open this hatch it actually doesn't open that high. So I am six foot four and Basically, I am still hitting my head on the hatch when I walk up to it. One thing that I found on the Chevy Traverse is you were able to open it to this angle, but you also had a secondary position on um, the driver's side door that you could change it to open up fully, and it was much higher, and I was not at risk of hitting my head on this. So when I was pulling the TV stand out of the car and I lifted up to lift it, I whacked my head on the top of this, which is super annoying. Um, yeah, so that is not a good thing. And then the one other thing that I wanted to show you, which is ding number five, is in the Chevy Traverse and also in the Acura MDX, these rear seats are able to slide forward. So when I say slide forward, I don't mean that they just drop forward like this. That's not what I mean. I mean, when these seats are up, 
that these seats can slide forward to give the people in the back a little bit more room. That is a huge issue because we were struggling with room. When I had the kids car seat in the back here and I had my driver's seat pushed all the way back in my position, my four-year-old almost had zero room to move. So it would have been nice if this seat would have been able to slide back, especially when there's nobody else sitting in the third row. But I found I was not able to do that, uh, which means it kind of becomes non-functional because my four-year-old, he's the youngest child and he's gonna get to be tall as well, like my seven-year-old is. And you need to have room for him to still sit in the car seat because he's not at the age where he can come out of it yet. So that is another big knock. So there are my five dislikes of the vehicle my five main dislikes uh, ultimately they're not really big things which is why I still really like this car I think that it is a good pick as long as it lasts and stands the test of time then I actually think that the uh, Dodge Durango is a good pick uh, I would definitely still take my MDX over the Durango for the money but this is a close second or third so don't forget like the video comment subscribe let me know if you find the same things in your Durango and if there's any other issues that you know of that are not good put them in the comment section so that somebody else who's looking to buy one of these can actually benefit from it give you a major thing that is terrible about this car if you go to the backup camera the camera is so grainy I know that it might not look grainy uh, over the you know over the camera that I'm using but in reality it is way grainier than the um, Chevy Traverse or than my wife's Acura so very grainy it does have trajectory showing you where you're turning but it really is a very grainy backup camera and considering how clear the rest of this display shows uh, I think that that was a huge miss on the part of Dodge